Alex with Four and a Half, and I'm really, really thrilled to have uh, Jessica here. Um, uh, she took you know a few minutes to speak with me, and 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 you know it's lunchtime up at Springfield, so I, we're gonna go through this quickly. Um, so let me introduce Jessica. First of all, um, self-described girl geek, right? Um, I love this uh, on the blog. You said girl geek. You know, worked in real estate since uh, 2000, and uh, in fact, real estate and property management, right? I have, yes. Uh, you also volunteer with uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Um, you do a lot of public speaking. You do. Um, uh, you'd like to create your own shoe line. That's unexpected. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a lot of goals and a lot of ambitions. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Uh, my wife would be thrilled. Um, you know, if you um, gave us a sampler or whatnot. <laughs> yeah. um, you also an avid blogger, and I was going to ask you about this. Um, I've seen articles on Zillow yes. that are written by you. So, so are you writing to for Zillow now? Is that I well I am and it's it's um it's actually worked out pretty well. Zillow contacted me maybe six months ago and had asked me if I'd be interested in giving them some posts based on the perspective from a landlord. Um, showing them kind of basically from the landlord side, but also from the tenant side. So I play kind of neutral sides. Even though I am the landlord, I talk about the best practices for the tenants to get their applications approved or to get what they want out of the landlord. I kind of take it from that approach. Really, really good. So, um, and, and do you like it? I mean, is it is is it work you enjoy? You know, I'm surprised at how many Twitter followers that I have gotten from it, and how many um, basically followers of the blog and the Twitter. Monetarily, no, it hasn't paid off for me. But you know. It, I think that we like to measure things, and so we're constantly wanting to know what the return on our investment is in social media. You know, the people that know your name, that are following you, that are making comments on your blog, and you're making comments on their blog, it's that kind of stuff that they'll come to you and they will use you when they need you. And, you know, if they want to go buy a house in Springfield, Missouri, my name's going to come up first because they remember talking to me on Twitter or left a comment on the blog post I did. They'll remember who you are. I, I'm definitely with you on this. In fact, I'm very, I, I'm, I'm fascinated with, you know, I can't even call this marketing anymore because it's not a push. Uh, it's more of a pull. It's you provide content, and exactly as you said, Jessica, you know, they will, you know, the people who want to work with you and, and and need the service will eventually bubble up to the surface when they're ready. In the meantime, you know, cultivate those relationships and just enjoy what you're doing. That's it's absolutely terrific. That's what I'm kind of trying to get to. So um, it's really good to have you. Um, right, so let's here let's run through those questions. I'm really excited to hear this because I've been following you guys for a while. Okay, I have done some NARPOM talks, and you know, uh, I bring up the the uh, hot tub landlord and your blog as kind of an example, but I've never really had a chance to speak with you about this. So, okay. I my, my hunch is you guys started with social media a while back. Um, what kind of prompted that um, start, and when did you start really? We kind of took the whole social media thing and did it a little bit backwards. Um, what happened was Christmas of 2005, I got a video iPod from my husband for Christmas. And I was really into, it was the first year they'd come out, and I was really into the video podcasts. Love the video podcasts. I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And I am of that mind frame of why aren't we on these video podcasts? Why can't we should be able to do this? And so um, I am typically not the face of the company. I write the scripts. I do the stuff behind the scenes. I put the videos together. I figure out how to get it on that video iPod. I turn the camera on Paul. <laughs> so we did this kind of backwards. We hadn't had a blog yet. So, but I learned all sorts of stuff about what video blogging was. We started putting our stuff up on YouTube. We started putting, you know, just random things up on, on the thing. And so when we started blogging, then it became, um, you know, we blogged so that we could put the videos up on there and get the RSS feed off of it. So that's how it all got started. So it was early 2006 that we started that. Early and 2006. Honest, the video iPod won't last. It's going to be out in a couple months and you're wasted your money. That yeah. was me. Just he so said, you know. He totally shot down the idea. And he said to me, he said, no one's ever going to watch video on a little two-inch screen. He said, that's never going to take off. And such a naysayer. And I was like, <laughs> okay, 
just smile for the camera and tell me something I, good. I, I, I was wrong. <laughs> yes, you were she, wrong. She keeps me. She <laughs> At least keeps you making it. me say that. So I was wrong. He was wrong. So you guys started blogging and video uh, tubing in, um, well, putting yourself out there on the YouTube in, in late 2006. Is that it? Yeah, well, it was early 2006 we started the blogging, the video blogging, and then we got into the YouTube thing, and then it was in 2007, obviously, when they opened up Facebook to anybody who wasn't a college student, mm -hmm. so it was early 2007 that we got on Facebook, and we really started gathering friends that way and networking with people online. Gotcha, so Facebook, uh, you started when, you know, when it started, you know, uh, YouTube, and um, and I know you're, you're pretty active on Twitter as well. So, so my question would be this: What, how are you guys? What kind of results have you seen? Um, you know, from all this effort that you put out. Okay. Typically, you know, everybody wants to know, well, how many sales have you made off of Twitter? And you know what? I can't really give you a number, but what I can tell you is, just last year, I met with approximately six people in just a few months after starting something on Twitter, and what that was was that was the Springfield Twitter chicks. And um, I had been talking with a group of a uh, group of women on Twitter. We were all in Springfield, and I had said, "Hey, we should meet up for coffee one time." And so there were. It started off just two of us girls talking about it, and then the third one jumped in, and she said, "Hey, I want to go, and I want to meet you." So we set up a tweet up, uh, just a random tweet up, just meet up for coffee, and we started jokingly using the hashtag of SGF Twitter Chicks. And little did we know there were other women out there just like us that were going, hey, I want to meet up for coffee. So we set this tweet up, put it out there on Twitter, and what I was expecting, just three of us would show up. Oh, hey, nice to meet you in person. There were like 14 girls that show up <laughs> for this. Very cool. And it was, I mean, it was absolutely, it was great. We sat down, we had coffee, we started talking about, you know, kids, home life, what we do for work, that kind of stuff. And within the first three months, I met with six out of those 14 girls, met with six of them about possibly either selling their house, renting out a house, or buying a house. And it was great. And it was like, all I did was go in and say, here's who I am. My name is Jessica Hickok, and I'm a landlord property manager. I'm also a real estate agent with Disney Associates here in Springfield. I have two kids that drive me crazy. And, <laughs> you know, just went right down the whole thing and just talked with them. Same thing. I asked them questions. What do you do? Well, little did I know, these people are looking for somebody in the real estate field or rental field and said, hey, I need I need your advice on something. I need your help. And then those turned around have turned out into gotcha. sales. Now, uh, you guys come up as number one or number two on mm -hmm. the search results when I put Springfield, Missouri property management. Like this, uh, yeah. get, getpoll.com is like one of the first ones. What Have you guys done any like s s search engine optimization work or is it, this is all organic from from your blogging and, and YouTube stuff? It's all organic from the blogging, and I guess I didn't really answer your question in the last one, but sorry about that. No, that's right. Got off that's right. Tangent. As far as the SEO, first of all, we changed everything over two years ago to WordPress. We changed our entire website over to WordPress, which was fantastic because we used the thesis theme, which really helps with SEO um, on the WordPress blog. And what we do is we set up the website part of it on the pages and then the blog side under posts with WordPress. That's how we set it all up uh, mm -hmm. as far as our site. But I started blogging on JessicaHickock.com, and actually I had a blogger <laughs> uh, blog that was, I um, can't even remember that. Oh, I love rentals because I would tell Paul all the time, I hate rentals. <laughs> I'd get so frustrated with it. So I started a blog called I Love Rentals, and then I eventually moved that over into what now is JessicaHickock.com. So that's where a lot of them started on Blogger, and now I've got JessicaHickock.com and then PaulDesmang.com where he blogs, and then we've got our GetPaul.com, which is everything just kind of points back there. And the thing about the internet, which you know this well, but um, the thing about the internet, they're constantly scraping for fresh content. That's how you get your Google ratings up and you get your SEO juice. They're scraping for fresh content. So if you're only posting once every, you know, once a year, you're not, you're not going to get up there. But if you're keeping fresh content on your site, even just throwing up a, you know, 150 word post about what you did today, use keywords like property management, landlord, Springfield, Missouri. Um, all of a sudden, that just is Google juice for you, is how I see it. And there, that's it. We learned that by trial and error. <laughs> absolutely. No, I'm with you on this 100%. And 
I, I think the technology is going from being kind of a cryptic to more human where, you know, well, you need this SEO person to get you, you know, optimized and, and, and you know, they speak the cryptic SEO language and whatnot. Now, these days, Google doesn't even index uh, the keywords no more, right? It's more of a, hey, what's the title? You know, what kind of media you have in your article? They're running off of titles a lot, I've noticed. Absolutely. So. Yep. Um, absolutely. So, um, what... I'm going to skip to the last question, okay? Okay. Because I, I really want to help um, my property management friends get started with this. And if they you know, they want to run a kind of a self-directed campaign or at least kind of dip their toe perhaps in um, in the social media, what would be the best place to start, Jessica? What, what, what would you recommend? First of all, I would start with stop telling people that you're a real estate and property manager. Stop telling that. If you are constantly saying on Twitter or on Facebook, hey, call me for all your real estate needs, people are going to rule you out. They, they already know you're a realtor. Talk about what it is that you love. Then you have to take the angle or the approach of do you want to attract tenants to your site or do you want to attract landlords to your site? Maybe a mixture of both and that's okay. What we did, and I guess the best answer to your question is start with coffee. And what I mean by that is throw it out there on Twitter. A Springfield, like we did once, in similar to the Springfield Twitter chicks that I mentioned earlier, right, right. we did a Springfield Landlords. And what we did was we reached out to several landlords in Springfield on Twitter and said, meet us for coffee. And what we did is we sat down and we talked about best practices. We learned a lot from these landlords about what they're doing versus, you know, just to make our job easier. And so, you know, start there. If you want to meet up with tenants, say, hey, you know, I'll buy the coffee. Come talk to me about, you know, you know, we'll, we'll talk rentals or we'll talk, you know, I'll just let your landlord buy you coffee. Start with something simple like that. Very cool. Um, I'm just taking notes here. This is gold. Oh, yeah. This is gold. I didn't even expect this. So I think this, 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 uh, uh, this interview will be valuable to, uh, you know, if nothing else, then for this particular advice, I haven't even thought of that. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot about tweet ups, but I've never, you know, done one or anything like that. Um, yeah. So th that is very cool. Well, um, so I really thank you for your time. Do, do you have any sure. other words of, of wisdom to add um, to property managers that are just thinking about starting with this? Any, any in regards. In regards to using social media for right. property management, the I guess the only other words that I would have is be yourself. Talk about what it is that you love. If you don't really truly love what you do every day, then why are you doing it? But if you really truly love your job and you wake up in the morning and you go, okay, what am I going to get done today? Talk about what it is that you do. Say, hey, I just I just rehabbed a house and put a tenant in it for seven ninety five a month. It's a great deal. Talk about that kind of stuff. That's what people want to know. They want to know the real you and they want to know the real story. So be real.